Hi everyone, I am out in the woods today and I thought it would be really fun to follow the sap along to see the steps it takes and what it goes through to become maple syrup. So hold on, it's going to get sappy. Right there was a pileated woodpecker. I was trying to see if I could see it, but I don't see him. We'll keep an eye out, see if he ends up flying by. So we are going to get started in the sugar bush, which is another name for the maple woods. And we're gonna start right at the tree here. So right here, I have a tree which was tapped. So the very first thing that we do is tap the tree so we manually drill it and then we insert the spout. So once the weather starts to change, that's when the sap will begin flowing. So you're looking for a period of time when it is freezing at night, warming up during the day, and that's when the sap will really start to flow, when the trees start to thaw out. So the sap will run from the tree into the spout down the drop line. This is what we call a drop line to the lateral line. So the drop line hooks into the lateral line, which then hooks into the main line. And then from there, we'll flow down all the way to our pump house, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But as you can see, it is early morning right now. It's still pretty cold outside. It's only about 20 degrees this morning. So the sap is frozen inside the line. So once it starts to warm up, the sap will thaw, melt, and begin flowing through the lines once again. Here's one of the lateral lines. You can see the sap moving through. And if the sap is moving real slow or barely moving, that's a good sign that there's no air leaks. Come on in, I'll show you around. My uh, son has started the vacuum pump up. He installed a new sap extractor this year. And we got about 24 inches of vacuum. which isn't bad, so things are pretty tight, but uh, we still have to walk through it and fine tune it. We are gearing up to boil tonight. Right now we are just get heading out to gather some sap, but I wanted to take a second to show you our silos. So after we gather the sap from all the woods, we bring it back down here with the truck where it goes into our silos. So all three of these silos hold 20,000 gallons. And then two of the silos are just for storage of the raw sap and the other one is divided into concentrate and permeate. So what that means is after the raw sap runs through the reverse osmosis machine, it gets divided into concentrate, which is the concentrated sap. So it's higher in bricks. And then the permeate is essentially just pure purified water reverse that came off of the reverse osmosis machine. So the concentrate is stored in the top of the silo, it's gravity fed into the evaporator and the permeate is at the bottom of the silo.
and now we're going to walk around go check out the sap truck because that's where we're heading so we can go pick up some more sap So this is our hose hookup that hooks up to the truck and feeds into the silos. As you can see, the silos that has a bunch of plumbing that connects them to the inside of the building. Heading out to haul some sap. connects the silos to our reverse osmosis machine. So the reverse osmosis machine is also referred to as the RO and these units are used to remove water from the sap, which helps to concentrate the sugar in the sap and speeds up our boiling process. 
Bricks refers to the percent of solids by weight and is the term most commonly used to discuss maple syrup density. For sugar ma makers like ourselves, it is often interpreted as percentage of sugar because sugar makes up the majority of the solids found in maple syrup. So here you can see that our reverse osmosis machine is set to 21 bricks, and this just helps us to cut down on our boiling time. So maple syrup must be a minimum density of 66 bricks in order to be considered maple syrup. Anything less than that, and it's more likely to spoil or mold. The sap enters the evaporator through this float box in the back. It goes through the float into this flue pan. It's a five foot wide by 10 foot long pan. It's got flues inside it that add up to a lot of surface area. Flues are corrugated and they go up and down in the pan. And it channels through and comes out the other side of the pan into another float box, which feeds into these front finishing pans where there's another few dividers where it follows the channels through. The syrup then comes out of the front pans through this modulating draw valve. The valve opens and closes depending on how hot the syrup is. The, hot, the hotter it gets, the more the valve opens. The syrup cools down and closes. And after it comes out of the evaporator, it winds up into this tub where we add filter aid powder and you mix in with the syrup. And then it goes through this syrup filter press and all that filter aid and the syrup gets filtered through there. After the syrup comes out of the filter press, it's 100% filtered, it's ready to go on a pancake. We put it into 40 gallon stainless drums because we sell most of our syrup bulk.
just finishing up for the night. So I'm going to let you guys go and I will catch you next time.